welcome to pharmacomania today's topic of discussion is the general consideration of autonomic nervous system functional organization of the peripheral nervous system before peripheral nervous system we'll discuss about the central nervous system central nervous system is uh, made up of two part brain and spinal cord and peripheral nervous system is the part of the spinal cord it divided into sensory and motor division sensory division is the afferent division which uh, carries the sensation from the peripheral peripheral part peripheral organ to brain and motor division is the uh, carries the sensation from brain to peripheral organ so sensory part also divided into two division somatic uh, sensory and visceral uh, sen uh, sensory so in somatic sen sensory there are touch pain pressure uh, vibration like sensation is carries from skin body wall and limbs and special sensation are hearing equilibrium and vision and visceral sensations are like general stretch pain temperature chemical changes and irrational irrit irritation in the viscera nausea and hunger and special are taste and smell these are the peripheral sensation and in motor or efferent division somatic and autonomic somatic division is the motor innervation of the all skeletal muscles and autonomic nervous system contain motor innervation of the smooth muscle and cardiac muscle and glands again autonomic nervous system can be divided into sympathetic division and parasympathetic division difference between autonomic and somatic nervous system so uh, organ supplied by somatic nerves are skeletal muscle when autonomic nerves supply by all the organs like the heart uh, heart stomach lungs intestine all the organ are supplied by the autonomic nervous system distal most synapse of the somatic nerve within the cns when in autonomic nervous system outside of the cns the nerve fibers are in somatic nervous system only myelinated fibers are there when autonomic nervous system pre ganglionic fibers are myelinated when post ganglionic fibers are non myelinated peripheral plexus formation are absent in somatic nervous system when present in the autonomic nervous system primarily efferent transmitter are acetylcholine in somatic nervous system but in autonomic nervous system acetylcholine as well as noradrenaline effect of the nerve section on the organ supply are paralysis and atrophy can occur due to somatic nerve damage and uh, activity maintained by or no atrophy can occur due to autonomic nervous system so these are the nerve fiber in somatic nervous system the motor fiber motor neuron is longer and it supply to the skeletal muscle and neurotransmitter is the acetylcholine and it remain in the cns and in autonomic nervous system there are two kind of the fiber parasympathetic and sympathetic fibers so in parasympathetic fiber pre ganglionic fiber is longer and post ganglionic fiber is shorter and this pre ganglionic fiber releases acetylcholine and in parasympathetic nervous system post ganglionic fiber also releases acetylcholine and they supply heart blood vessel viscera eye and glands and in sympathetic nervous system pre ganglionic fibers are shorter post ganglionic fiber are longer in sympathetic nervous system pre ganglionic fiber releases acetylcholine when post ganglionic fiber releases noradrenaline and acetylcholine both and they also supply heart blood vessel viscera eye and glands these are the somatic nervous system the fiber is longer neuron is longer and it supply to the skeletal muscle and here autonomic nervous system it supply pre ganglionically and this ganglia supply to the organ this pre ganglionic axons and this is post ganglionic axon 
autonomic nervous system is the balance between sympathetic and parasympathetic activity on our body so this both system sympathetic as well as parasympathetic system act on the vessel system vegetative system involuntary system and it is widely distributed like whenever you are on rest and digest some kind of food then parasympathetic activity dominant when you are in stress some kind of like physical emotional or verbal stress is there then fight or flight sympathetic activity will be dominant the innervation of the heart blood vessel gland and other visceral organ smooth smooth muscle and various tissues are activated sympathetic thoracolumbar division the preganglionic neuron is lateral gray horn of the spinal segments of t1 to l2 vertebra and these send to preganglionic fiber these fibers preganglionic fiber enter into the ganglia near the spinal cord these preganglionic fiber enter to the ganglia near the spinal cord preganglionic fiber releases acetylcholine and which stimulating the ganglionic neuron which send to postganglionic fiber these preganglionic fiber releases acetylcholine and which stimulate ganglionic neuron and which is release which send to the postganglionic fiber and this postganglionic fiber target to the reaches to the target organ most postganglionic fibers are releases norepinephrine at the neuro effector junction and due to norepinephrine fight and flight response can occur when parasympathetic activity occur due to simulation of the parasympathetic neuron which is arises from the craniosacral division preganglionic neuron in the brain stem and in the lateral portion of the anterior gray horn of the s2 and s4 sacral 2 and sacral 4th now this uh, ganglia is uh, or the near the target organ and preganglionic fiber releases acetylcholine and stimulate the ganglionic neuron and which send to the postganglionic fiber and target organ all the postganglionic fiber releases acetylcholine at the neuro effector junction and at the last rest and repose response can occur so these are the both neurotransmitter are different in both the division in sympathetic division new preganglionic uh, neurotransmitter uh, is the acetylcholine and postganglionic neurotransmitter is the norepinephrine and due to norepinephrine fight and flight response occur and in parasympathetic division preganglionic uh, transmitter is acetylcholine as well as postganglionic transmitter is also acetylcholine and ultimately response is the rest and a repose response there are 22 pairs of paravertebral ganglia form the lateral chain on the either side of the vertebral column distribution to sweat gland pilomotor muscle blood vessel of the smooth muscle and skin prevertebral ganglia in the abdomen and pelvis near the ventral surface of vertebral column celiac aortico renal superior mesenteric and inferior mesenteric are the prevertebral ganglia terminal ganglia are few numbers lie near the organ like cervical ganglia ganglia connected to the urinary bladder or rectum these are the terminal ganglia and splanchnic nerve form the fifth to last thoracic segment preganglionic fiber passes through the paravertebral ganglia to form the splanchnic nerve which do not synapse until they reach celiac ganglia adrenal medulla and other chromaffin tissues embryologically and anatomically similar to sympathetic ganglia as they all are derived from the neural crest adrenal medulla releases epinephrine and sympathetic fiber releases so parasympathetic nervous system is made up of two part preganglionic fiber come from the sacro cranial part postganglionic are connect, uh, connection central part is ori- originated from midbrain medulla oblongata and sacral part of the spinal cord so in the midbrain fibers arising from the adinger westphal nucleus of the third cranial nerve and going to the ciliary ganglia in the orbit from medulla oblongata parasympathetic 
component of the 7th, 9th and 10th cranial nerve. 7th, 9th and 10th cranial nerve arises from the medulla oblongata when 3rd nerve arises from the midbrain at the adinger westphal nucleus and from the sacral part axonal axons are arise from the cell in the second third fourth segment of the sacral cord and proceed as preganglionic fiber to form the pelvic nerve they synapse in the terminal ganglia lying near the or within the bladder rectum or sexual organ now antric nervous system is the sensory motor control of the restricted part of the gastrointestinal tract myentric plexus between the longitudinal and circular muscle of the intestine contraction and relaxation of the gi smooth muscle mesenteric plexus is the submucosal plexus secretory and absorbing the function of the gi tract epithelium local blood flow and neuroimmunological activities are depend on the mesner plexus differences of the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system so first of all sympathetic nervous system the origin of the sympathetic nervous system is from the dorsal lumbar division from thoracic 1 to l2 or l3 vertebra and it is widely distributed and ganglia away from the organ is supplied and post ganglionic fiber are longer than the pre ganglionic fiber and pre and post ganglionic fiber ratio is 1 is to 20 to 1 is 200 and neuro effector transmitter is the major is the norepinephrine stability of transport neurotransmitter uh, is the stable diffuses for the y direction and the important function is the taking care about the stress and the emergency when parasympathetic activity is the the origin of the fiber from the cranio sacral division from the cranium third seventh ninth and tenth now from the uh, cranium and s2 and s4 from the sacral part limited to the head neck and trunk on uh, ganglia are on or uh, close to the organ and supplied Uh, so uh, post ganglionic fiber are shorter than the pre ganglionic fiber and pre ganglionic post ganglionic fiber ratio is 1 is to 1 or 1 is to 2 the major neurotransmitter is the acetylcholine and it is diffuse uh, it is destroyed locally rapidly destroyed locally and uh, it, uh, function is the to digest the food and converts the conversion of the energy from the food general function of autonomic nervous system parasympathetic and sympathetic division both are opposite to each other but they are balancing our body so whenever parasympathetic over activity occur then our body is on rest and has to digest the food so at that time our body parts respond according to it so first of all eye muscles that are constrict the pupil so no need of far vision so we have to uh, focus nearly so only constriction of the pupil occur we have to digest the food so stimulation of saliva uh, salivary secretion from submaxillary and submandibular glands constriction of bronchus and secretion of the lungs slow down heart rate so there is no need of more oxygen to our body so heart rate become slow down stimulate stomach pancreas and intestine so increase the uh, increase the uh, secretion of the stomach pancreas and intestine causes more digestion of the food and increase peristalsis of the gi tract stimulation of urination and voiding of urine occur and promote erection of genital yes now sympathetic division over activity causes whenever we are in fight and flight mode if some animal is following you then this uh, this kind of sympathetic over activity can occur at that time we have to look for the far vision so dilate the pupil and 
inhibit salivary secretion dilate bronchi 2 increase the oxygen supply to the lung and body accelerate heart rate to pump out more oxygenated blood and supply it to the body stimulate epinephrine and norepinephrine and release stimulate glucose release more glucose release more glucose release will supply to the muscle for the running away inhibit stomach pancreas and intestinal activity inhibit urination and promote ejaculation and vaginal contraction these all are sympathetic over activity these all are symptoms of the sympathetic over activities thank you for watching the video